there. Welcome. Sorry for the start, stop, start, stop. I think it was three times. The third time was the charm. Yeah, um, well, it, you know, it's typical. Yeah, but trying okay. to get the microphone to work. Um, and so I, I think we finally got it. It's lit up, right? Yeah. Okay. So I think we're good all to right, go. Good. Uh, I'm Jen. I'm Marsha. And we are Tea for All Reasons. And we have a lot going on tonight. So we're actually... I'm um, going to switch up how we normally do things, the order of things, because the baking demo is going to take the entire time and it has multiple steps. And so we're going to move to the stove and we'll get to the, um, the first part of the baking demo and then we'll do some announcements and, and uh, continue on with our evening. Yeah. And hopefully that gives some time for some folks to hop on board. Hop too. on board, yeah. Find us since we started, stopped, started, stopped several times. Right. So. Yeah, and, and so tonight is really going to be a little bit different. A lot different. A lot different, actually, because Jen's doing the cooking demo tonight. You mm -hmm. don't get to do that very often. Mm -mm. <clears throat> and um, nope. and it's going to be, you know, a little bit involved, which is yep. good. and But not too hard for you to do. No. And, um, yeah, so we are switching things up quite a bit, yep. but um, we're really glad to be here. And um, we were talking earlier about the fact that this is the month that we started doing the Facebook Lives two years ago. Two years. Two years ago in <clears throat> September, we yep. started, and we couldn't believe it that we're still doing it. Yeah. We thought it was just going to be a short-term COVID thing, but isn't that how a lot of... Um, online things have happened with Facebook and other you know other things where people have used the internet to get their products out or get their services out and the, during covid and then they wind up being Sticking on all with the time it. yep yeah. exactly cuz we're not going anywhere we're not going anywhere we're we gonna, enjoy it we do we look uh, yep we look forward to it every yep. month yeah we like planning it and trying to think of new things that we can show you guys and so um, we're excited yeah. about tonight so yeah. Um, we're going to get to it because there's a lot involved. It, it's an easy recipe, but there it, there are multiple steps. Yeah. And so we're going to start step one. So we're going to move into the kitchen. Okay. The kitchen kitchen. Um, okay, so the baking demo tonight is, if you're familiar with TikTok, and you may have seen this on TikTok or a couple other places, even on Pinterest, uh, the Philo, Philo? Philo. Crinkle Cake. Um, and um, I tested this last month. My family loved it. Molly can attest. Molly's here doing comments, and my dad, as always, Hi. is on the camera. Um, so <laughs> I'm doing a version of that TikTok crinkle cake uh, with phyllo, phyllo. I always say phyllo because it's a Y. Yeah. But I hear other people say phyllo, so however you pronounce it, that's totally fine. Um, so, but this one's going to be a caramel apple pecan crinkle cake, and I've I've prepped. I got my mise en place, which is getting all of your stuff ready to go, um, and so it is one entire box of phyllo thawed completely, and in your box of phyllo you've got two packages like this with your phyllo rolled up. I've already crinkled up one to save time, and I'll show you how to crinkle the second package in a second. But um, the first thing I'm going to do is make the custard so that this has time to sit and the sugar can dissolve a little bit in the egg and milk mixture. So the custard is composed, well, first thing you do is turn on your oven to 350 Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in... Centigrade. centigrade Celsius. Two, 220 maybe? I don't, know. I don't know, but everything is American measurements, so if you're not from the U.S., I apologize. Um, you'll have to convert. Um, but set your oven to 350 and give that a good chance to preheat, and then you are going to grease your pan. And um, you can use a 9 by 13 casserole dish. I don't recommend using a jelly roll pan that has a, that's too shallow, I think. Um, I bought an aluminum pan that's about an inch and a half deep. Yeah, it's kind of in between the two. It's kind of in between the two, but I think it's a good depth. Um, so this isn't a pretty pan, but um, but it's going to work, and I think it'll. It's easier for you guys to see um, as well. Um, 
but a nine by thirteen will work. The phyllo, uh, phyllo folds up nicely either way. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but we're going to make the custard first, and then I'll show you this. So the custard is one cup of sugar, one cup of milk, two large eggs, and this cup has the eggs in it already. Um, I went ahead and, and uh, shelled the eggs into the milk. Uh, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, which is also already in the milk, just to save time. And so I'm going to put the milk, egg, vanilla mixture into our bowl. So that was one cup of milk, and you can use any milk, almond milk, soy milk, whatever milk um, you prefer. It does not have to be cow's milk. Um, and I'm going to break up those eggs and mix it a little bit. And then you're going to add one cup of sugar, white sugar, to that. And you want to get that mixed in really well. And so the reason why I do this step first is to give the sugar a chance to dissolve into this liquid for a little bit and because um, it's going to sit for about 20 minutes and it'll make sense when you see. Um, so that's mixed up pretty well. And then in this particular one, I'm adding about two tablespoons-ish of caramel sauce. And this is just store-bought caramel sauce that you might find in the, like, for putting on top of ice cream. Um, yeah, I bought Smucker's caramel sauce, and that's the stuff that typically is used for ice cream as an ice cream topping, and I'm putting that in the custard. It just adds a little, it's not a lot, but it adds a little bit of a caramel flavor to, thank you, to the custard. And so now I'm going to whip this up, get that all incorporated really well, and you can see the color turn once that caramel got mixed in. And then I'm going to set this aside. Thank you very much. Until step three. So this, we don't need this right now. I'm trying to figure out a good place to put this. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside for now. And then, and then what you would do is crinkle your phyllo. And um, and so I've already done one package of the phyllo, but I did want to show you how to crinkle it. Yes, I will post this online. Oh, also. Um, so mom and I are going to need a few minutes to stretch later. And so we're actually going to hold some questions until that time. And so feel free to ask your question and we may not answer it immediately, right. but we will answer um, later in the program um, just so that we can keep things moving. Um, but then also we do have a few minutes where we'll need to have things to talk about and so we can answer your questions. But um, anyway, so you can see I've already crinkled. Basically, you're just accordion folding these filer sheets. And so I'm going to unroll this, and it literally is rolled up in, pa in uh, plastic, which makes it really easy. Oops, what did I do? Okay. All right, and then you're going to take two sheets at a time. What happened here? I don't know what happened here. I think this is one sheet and I messed it up. So you take two sheets and I'm these got messed up so I'm just going to do them. But you just basically pick it up and fold it accordion style and push it in to the pan. Yeah, I think that sheet got messed up somehow. But that's okay. It, yeah, all, it's all it all gonna, works. It all works anyway. It all works. So two sheets at a time. And you don't have to brush them with butter. You know, typically you've got to brush every layer with butter. The butter's coming later. Mm. But you just pick up two sheets at a time and you crinkle. You just fold it into an accordion and put it in the pan. Now, I did it this way, but you can also do it this way and then lay it in the pan like that. But... The, the video that I saw did it this way. Yeah. Makes sense. And so this is the way I do it. I'll make sure I have two. Okay. And these are nice and soft because they've thawed completely. 
Um, I recommend when you take your phyllo phyllo out of the freezer, go ahead and take both of those packages out of the box and lay them separately on the counter. They thaw faster. I took mine out this morning and by the time we got here this afternoon it was completely thawed. And if they tear, don't worry about it because you see what it looks like in the pan. Um, it's totally fine. It's very forgiving. And it ultimately does not matter. Alright, just a few more. Two. Accordion. Oh. I know. I'm I'm so looking forward to this. This just it's gonna be super yummy. So it's not hard. It's no. a little you know. And I think this is easy enough that kids could help with this. Kids could help, absolutely. I actually, oh, look, see that was all folded up. Um, I actually saw someone did it in a round. I thought about bringing my round. Oh. Where y you, um. You start in the center? Start, no, you start on the outside and work your way in. Really? Okay, so like a spiral? Like a spiral. Oh. But it doesn't really look like a spiral, but you've got a nice rosette in the yeah. middle. And then um, you would cut it into wedges once it's And then it's you would cooked. cut it into wedges. Hey, this like one's going to get cut into squares uh -huh. when you cut it. Now this would work for a tea. Um, you know, Absolutely. make it ahead of time. And yeah. then you, on your server, you can put, you know, little squares on your server. Look, this is going to be perfect. Uh -huh. Almost done. Put those in there, and then these now, are the it, last two. Does it turn out to be um, really flaky? Yes. When, when you cut it, it's very, very yeah, flaky. Well, it's flaky, but also now see this one's all ripped. Yeah. But doesn't just kind of doesn't matter, and kind of work with it. Mm -hmm. Folding up. Yeah. So you were saying. Um, yeah, it's flaky. But um, but it holds together. but it holds together because the custard that's going to go in okay. it holds it together. Okay, okay, now that remember that first sheet was cut in half. Yeah. So I'm going to just take this folded, and that gives you the width of two, and you just slide that okay. in there. And so wow. then, then we're and I did grease this um, pan um, with a little bit of butter. I used butter, and I lightly wiped it with um, butter so that it is greased and then we're going to put this in the 350 oven for 10 minutes you're not putting anything on it yet it goes in dry for 10 minutes you want to crisp this up a little bit before you start putting the liquid on it so you can put that in for 10 minutes and I'll move this out of the way and then while we wait on that mom is going to show you her table toppers. Yeah. So I'm going to stay in here, but you're going to go with mom and she's going to show you table toppers. Okay, well y'all know I've been busy. I go up to the sewing room almost every night and create something beautiful. And so here are some of the fruit of my labor. And um, most of the things, if not all of the things at this end are fall themed. <clears throat> these could be as well, but these are the, the table toppers, and they're all in the Etsy shop. Uh, they're already listed in the Etsy shop, and you'll see the dimensions um, for each listing. But in general, these are all about 44 by 44 inches. Uh, there is one, uh, this one down here is 36 by 36, and this one may be a little bit smaller than 44, maybe 42, something like that. But the others are, I think, in the 44 range. So I'm just going to go one by one and show you. And if you can get a, a kind of a close-up on that. This one I call Blessed. Home is where our story begins. Uh, our nest is blessed. And it's a creamy uh, background, a nice um, weight of fabric, and all um, edged nicely and so that's the first one 
And then this one, actually, I probably should have started. Let me start at the other end. I think it's going to be easier. Um, this is a, a tea-themed uh, one. You'll see the teapots and the plates and the sugar bowl and what have you. This one, as I said, is 36 by 36. This background is black, but beautiful, vibrant colors there. And then this one is leaf leaves. Um, this is um, not a heavyweight cotton. Neither is this. They're both pretty normal weight cotton. And um, so they're not quite as uh, expensive in the shop as these are. But uh, just a really pretty one for the fall, for Thanksgiving, and what have you. And then here's a beautiful one with uh, pumpkins. A uh, little bit lighter weight fabric like these. Uh, cotton and um, just beautiful pumpkins and kind of aqua. Um, these look like gourds. And then this one here is just beautiful. This has, I'm always looking for anything that has blue in it because I use a lot of blue even in the holidays. So this one has um, kind of blue hints in, in these pumpkins and then the orange and the lighter colors too. And this is a kind of a lighter weight cotton as well. And then this one I just love. This is a creamy background with metallic leaves, a little bit heavier fabric, really beautiful. This would make just a beautiful table topper for Thanksgiving for sure. And then this one is also a leaf pattern, a little bit heavier fabric, really nice fabric. It just doesn't wrinkle. Um, just lovely and uh, in beautiful leaf pattern. And this is a, kind of a gray with brown and gold and uh, pumpkin color. And then this one, like the creamy one, has um, family blessed, um, same message as on the other one. But this color, and I don't know if it conveys very well in the camera, but it's kind of a gray green. Almost a sage green, but a little grayer than that. But it's just beautiful. And again, both of these I think would be wonderful for um, Thanksgiving. Really great because of the messages and everything. But they could be used year-round as well. All right, and I did show this in the on the Facebook page um, a few days ago. This one is actually the smaller size. This one is, I believe, 26 by 26. So this goes in the center of your table, a table topper. And this is a nice heavyweight uh, decorator fabric. And then this one is the larger one. And this one is, I believe, um, something like 48 by 48. So it would really go well on a large table. And then these two, um, they're matching in size and a nice uh, decorator fabric. It almost has kind of a polished feel to it and um, just a really nice plaid. It would be beautiful on the table. And there are two of those. So you could actually, with according to the size, and I can't quote the exact size, I think probably um, probably around 40. I'm, I'm not sure they're 44, but anyway, you could even do two on a table like this and have your centerpiece in the center. And then this one is one of the most popular fabrics. This is a table topper, but it's the lighter weight, um, but a beautiful um, option for a table topper and with the tea motif, really pretty for the tea table. And then these two are just beautiful. Two runners. Um, these are a bit shorter than some of the others that I've made. Um, I wish I could quote the length. I think it's 64 or 65, and there are two of them. But they're not perfectly matching. If you'll see, this one goes this way, and the other one is this way. So they are a bit different. All right, and then this one is one of my newest, and again, for fall, would be beautiful on a Thanksgiving table, um, runner, and I believe this one is 65 long. There are two of them, 
So you could do, you know, one here, one there, something like that. Or if you have two tables, you would have one for each. Um, I also have another one I'm going to be making, and, and I'll get it done very soon, but it's going to be wider. This one is 17 inches, and I think the other one is probably more like 20, something like that wide, but the same length. And this fabric is a beautiful decorator fabric. It is lined, um, but it has almost a, a, just a little bit of a sheen to it. Okay, and then these two you're familiar with. We've had the blue and the black, and I have red. I haven't made the red ones yet, but I do have enough to make three red ones. And um, they're already listed in the shop, made to order. So, um, but the blue, fully lined, and the black as well. And so there are two black ones left and one blue one left. This is the last blue one I have, by the way. Okay, and lastly, this beautiful round tablecloth and in blue and kind of um, salmon color. It's uh, about 86 inches, um, and it has the nice thick piping along the bottom. And you'll see this in the Etsy shop. You'll actually see a photograph of it on the, um, on the uh, on a round table. But it's just a beautiful blue. Just beautiful. Okay, I think that's all that I have this time. Okay? Someone asked, are the runners machine washable? No. The runners are not. The table toppers, um, I just wouldn't do it. Be, you know, unless, I mean, I would be inclined to do spot cleaning on them. If you have a spill or something, I would spot clean. I just think that it loses something when it's machine washed. It can be, but I just personally wouldn't do it. Uh, the runners, for sure, you do not want to put in the washing machine. You could have them dry cleaned, but I wouldn't put them in the washing machine. Okay? Okay. Timer's going to go off soon. Okay. 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 You got about two minutes. Two minutes. So, actually, one minute. It just did the beep on the one minute. Um, so, um, and you did answer that question already. I did grease the bottom and the sides of the pan. I basically, so the next step involves melted butter. So I basically put the butter sticks in my, um, measuring cup for melting in the microwave. And then I took the wrapper that the butter was in, um, and used that to grease the, the pan pretty thoroughly, bottom and sides. It doesn't really, so when, the first time I made it, I did in a glass or a Pyrex casserole dish. I didn't grease it, and it came out just fine. But, um, but you are dealing with a custard that's sugar and egg, and mm -hmm. um, so you might want to, which is why I greased it this time, just to make sure that it doesn't stick. You don't want it to stick. Right. And so. I wonder if um, using a metal pan as opposed to a glass pan makes it a little crispier. Uh, we'll find out. We'll, we'll find out. So she's going to grab that. And so the next step is you're going to take two sticks of butter. Yes, two whole sticks of butter. Um, and you're going to melt it. And so I melted it in the microwave. It took about 45 seconds to melt both sticks together. And then you're literally just pouring this over pretty evenly. And you can see where it crisped up on the, on the edges in particular. Um, but the top is a little crispy too. But you're going to pour this butter over... Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is not low calorie. But it's not like you have to have a big piece either. No, no, you know? no, no, no. It's almost like when you have uh, baklava. Yeah. And it, you just have a little... Well, and someone had con uh, commented that baklava is... Baklava. Um, ...used with phyllo mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, and just a little bit of that goes a long way. A little bit goes a long way. There you go. You can okay. take that. That's so hot. I'm going to kind of tilt that a little bit, make sure. Okay, and then that goes back in the oven. It's not hot. I mean, the bottoms are. All right. That goes in the oven for another 10 minutes. Um, so your first step is dry 10 minutes, put the butter on it, and then for another 10. And so while that's going on, 
Mom and I are going to explain the giveaway. Um, all of our normal announcements that we do are coming later. I just wanted to make sure we took care of these two steps because because um, it is multiple steps of in the oven, um, and so that's why our evening is a little more disjointed than yeah, it normally would be, but I think it's going to work. Yeah. So that's 10 minutes. So there is a giveaway for tonight. Um, I'm giving away two items together, um, and I'm giving away the new limited edition Queen's Blend, a two ounce bag of the Queen's Blend that I did in honor of uh, Her Majesty, uh, Queen Elizabeth II. Um, it is Black tea with raspberry lemon. Lemon. I was trying to remember because the <laughs> King's Blend too. Uh, lemon and um, it's it's a really nice tea. Yeah. It's so nice. Mom actually created this blend for her Diamond Jubilee for the Diamond um, 2012. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had a big we had a big open house here and. Um, uh, yeah, we had a spring open house mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. year. I think I did two. Wow, crazy yeah. me. Yep. And uh, yeah, so created that yeah. for her Diamond Jubilee, but it hasn't been out for a while, and so I thought, mm -hmm. you know what, let's bring it back in honor of Her Majesty the Queen. And so the Queen's yeah. Blend two ounce bag is the giveaway, along with this cute little oh, book of it's tea. So cute. That I picked up in Williamsburg. It's just got cute little sayings. It's a nice, it's a nice little book on the coffee table in your bathroom, mm -hmm. you know, wherever. Yeah. Um, anyway, both of these things are the giveaway, and the key word is QE2. Oh. Can't get any easier than that. QE2. The letter Q, the letter E, and the number 2. QE2, put that in the comments if you want to enter the drawing for the giveaway. And like I always do, tomorrow I'll go through all of those... Sorry, we're not close enough. <laughs> I'll go through all of those comments and... Um, and and put your names in the Tea for All Reasons mug. And Molly and I will draw your name out of the Tea for All Reasons mug. All right. Um, yeah, and I'm going to show these. I do carry these in the shop. This is the 15-ounce mug, and there's an 11-ounce mug as well. Um, so, um, okay, so stretching time because we had eight <coughs> minutes. Um, one, oh, and we had we had this question. Oh, we too. do have that question. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will post this recipe online. Yes. Uh, at our food for all reasons page. Yes. Glitched out suddenly for like a good five seconds. Just Are we to still there? Out. Yeah. Okay. But I think it's good now. Okay. It's, oh wait, no, it's really low quality. Oh. Okay, well, we'll just... We're going to hang in. We're just going to keep going, yeah. and hopefully it'll smooth itself out. Um, yeah, but someone asked if we're going to post the recipe. Yes, I will post it at foodforallreasons.com, which is our sister page. Yeah. Um, well, I, I might post it as a blog, but it'll be on the Food for All Reasons page. I'll figure it out. It'll take me and, a day or two to post it. Yeah, and we'll we'll send a link. You know, if you if you're not familiar with Food for All Reasons, we'll put a link on T for All Reasons to yeah, send you and, to Food in for the All page, Reasons, and um, then go like the page so that you get exactly, all the updates. Get yep. all the updates for that. So there is that, and then okay, seven minutes. So um, one of the things that I wanted to let you know. Um, this is part of the announcements, so the announcements are going to get broken up as we have time okay. to go through them. It's all right. um, we always wing it. We do. So one of the things I wanted to mention is I, I'm still having supply issues with mm -hmm. my vendors, and I tried ordering teas from two vendors this week, and I was told that they're back ordered for an extended period because they don't know when their containers are coming in from overseas wow. and or discontinued altogether. And so I wanted to let you know, you, you might have already seen if you've been on the website, Lady Mary's Reserve is out of stock and back ordered. Oof. I can get it. Yeah. Okay. But um, it's back ordered until I think she said maybe November. They're hoping to get a container in in oh. October. Okay. And then I mm -hmm. would receive the tea maybe in November. Um, I have enough in stock to take care of samplers, but I don't want to sell larger bags and run out and not be able to do the samplers. Um, so 
if you want Lady Mary's, you have to buy a sampler to get it. Because I'm because uh, I'm not going to sell large bags. Because okay. I really I don't have a lot right. um, of the Lady Marys. And then let me find my um, the other one that is low in stock is Cream Roll Gray, um, and uh, they don't know when they're getting that back in stock um, on my main vendor. Now there are two other suppliers that have a Cream Roll Gray. Um, and so I'm getting samples from them that I'm going to compare to the yeah, other. to do quality testing. Quality testing. Yeah. I may use those in blends, you know, where cream roll gray is a, an ingredient in a blend. Um, I may use those for that and reserve the cream roll gray that's the primary for selling. Yeah. Um, but I'm... I'm for now, it's very low in stock. I'm, I may have waitlisted it in the shop just to make sure yeah. um, until I know what I can do. Um, because I do use it in blends, and I have wholesale customers that need it, you know, that right. order, and I yeah. need it. So yeah. there's that. And then the other one, and this is really bad news, really bad, really bad um, news, that glitter and gold is discontinued altogether. Like, I can't get it. They're not making it anymore, and so um, I am. Uh, I know that several of you love love that blend. I have a wholesale customer that buys a lot of that, especially during the holidays. Um, so I'm scrambling, trying to figure out how I can try to replicate that blend. Yeah. Although I I don't know. I don't know how I can, and then um, uh, and then I'm actually going to talk to the tea blender at that vendor mm, on good, Monday. Good idea. And see if there's something that they recommend in terms of other teas that they have yeah. that can replace that. So because certainly you're not the only customer who's disappointed. They they've got to have other customers. I would hope. And and what what is their solution? For, right. You know. Right. So. There was another blend that that supplier had that I thought maybe I could tweak to match glitter and gold but that one's discontinued as well oh wow so i'm Must wondering something, something with the, the cherry i'm thinking yeah. the cherries that they use or something yeah is because okay. that has cherries in it um kel horror yes yep <laughs> so um anyway so i just wanted to make you aware that when a tea is waitlisted in my shop um i can't get it I, like it it's, it's back for, it's, it's back for good reason um, yeah it's for now good reason. i keep stock when I know I have low stock, I will let it go out of stock until I can assess and know that I can replace it. Um, but anymore, if you see that a tea is waitlisted for an extended period of time on the website, it means it's back ordered with my supplier. Yeah. Um, because it it will go waitlisted if if you know my inventory that I put on the website drops to zero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if I know I have more, I immediately add more stock. Yeah. It's so. the state of things right now. It it's is. It's just really difficult. It is. So, uh, anyway, just want to let you know that we're at the two-minute two. mark. and. Um, but, on the other hand, you've got some. I mean, I know you're going to get to that after, to the, after we get to. I have um, some new. We have some new things that are just, oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Jen brought me a whole bag of... Um, New blends that I order for myself, and I can't wait to try. They're just oh them. yeah, I'm, I know I will. Yeah. Just wonderful new fall blends. Yep. So I'm going to show you a couple of these blends. Hold on. And um, will the supply issue affect the Advent tea? Oh. Possibly because I was going to put glitter and gold in the Advent, and now that's not going to happen, and so I need to replace it. But I have new holiday teas, and so um, I don't think you'll be disappointed ultimately because you are going to get a couple of the new teas in the Advent box mm -hmm. yeah. this year. And I'm going to talk about Advent later. Yeah, I haven't forgotten. <laughs> Advent's coming. It's coming. Um, and so yeah, um, yeah, glitter and gold will not be in the Advent this year because. No, I can't but, get it. But there'll be something good. But there will be other teas. And yeah. the Advent boxes will have different... The Advent box this year will have different teas than it did last year. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to have all of the hot, holiday blends, mostly, but um, a bunch of new ones, too. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, because I have some new holiday blends. I know. Yeah. 
Okay, so that timer's going. Okay, so this is where we move into the third step of the baking. And um, this one will take a little bit more time, but mom's gonna help me with this. And then once we get this back in the oven, it goes, once we do this apple step, um, it goes back in the oven for another 30 minutes. Look, I'm gonna give you some of these paper towels. Okay. And uh, for 30 or 40 minutes, oh, that didn't work out well. Um, and we'll take a five minute break and then we'll come back and do the tea demo. So, um, you want me yeah, to just start drying? Yeah, them? take some. Oh, I was going to show slicing. So oh. we're doing sliced apples, um, and I sliced them pretty thinly. I left the um, and I sliced them a couple hours ago, and put them in uh, water with lemon to keep them from browning. Um, but these are Honeycrisp apples, which are a nice tart apple that is suitable for a pie, or to be baked. And I was going to demonstrate slicing, but I'm not going to do it because I think we have enough apples. But I, I tried to slice them pretty thinly because they're going to go into the folds of this pan. Um, and so we're going to dry them, and I'm going to start on one end. And you kind of have to separate these folds a little bit. It takes a little bit of time. And you're trying to get them into each fold? Yeah, I just, just randomly shove them in the folds. So however you can best get them in. They don't have to be even, it can be random. And you're just shoving it down in the fold. So let me see, so you're putting two in each row? Well, it, some of them may have three. Okay. Just depends on how you get them in there. But because these were soaking in water, we're patting them dry on paper towels, but if you slice them fresh, um, you can just slide them right in there. So the best you can in between the folds. And they're crispy already. I mean, the, yeah, the phyllo, the phyllo is. is crispy yeah. already. Yep, yeah, for sure. That butter and that double bake gets it pretty crispy. Sometimes it, it it's hard to get these apples down in there and they may not go all the way down to the bottom and that's right. fine because right. they're going to soften up. Some of these are fat. And you can skip layers, Mom. You don't need to have them. What do you mean? Like, they don't need to go in. Oh, every yeah, single every one. Single, okay. Yeah, you're not going to yeah. get every layer. I know. I hear you, Molly. Molly has a question for me. Hold on. Yeah, that one doesn't want to go in. There. Yeah, so just shove them however you can get them. Somebody out. said they're on late. What are we making? Oh. We're making the TikTok crinkle cake. This is the caramel apple version that I made a month ago that I tested for my family. They loved it and so I decided let's do it for y'all. And so mom and I are shoving apple slices. <laughs> so this is about, we're going to put in about uh, one and a half apples. Well actually it's only one because you ate the other half and that one is, we may have to slice that. Uh, extra bit there. So we're trying to, yeah, you're, you need to space it space out, it out more okay. in the layers, otherwise you're not going to run out of apples. going to run out in the middle. Okay. Anyway, so we're putting these apples in, um, in between the layers. Actually, let's get that in there. Some of these layers are funky. Um... And then uh, this is going to have pecans on it, and so we're going to put these apples on, and then we're going to sprinkle the top with pecans, chopped pecans, about a third of a cup, um, and then cover it with the custard, and I'll show you. Oh my gosh, it just that. sounds so fabulous. It's Fabulous! Can't wait. Absolutely. I've fabulous. been really trying to watch my sugar lately. Oh no, you can't watch it on this one. <sighs> you watch it go in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I think I said this is a uh, about one and a half apples. Pretty 
like small to medium you don't need giant apples and it's to your taste however many you want in there um, yeah, yeah, you're gonna slice that you can show a slice to see how big the apple was yeah so the core is out but um, it was the pretty good size apples um, and this what we cut was one and a half well mom's finishing to get us to a total of one and a half apples you can do more you can do less you don't need apples at all oh what yeah we talked about other fruit peaches yeah so this is caramel apples so I added the caramel to the custard but you can leave the caramel out of the custard and just do the plain custard or you could add cinnamon and nutmeg or you know like traditional fall spices to go with your apples you could use pears you can use yes pears would be good um, Something, what could you use with you can, maple syrup? You could use, well, pears with maple. Yeah. Um, apples with maple. Yeah. You could do uh, berries with lemon yeah. in your custard. Um, that was a little thick. Try to put some in the middle. And then, um, I think that actually is not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, you got a lot in there. It's pretty there. dense, but yeah. It was, slide one and I think what I what I learned too is um, you don't want them too thin because then they get kind of um, flimsy yeah but you don't want them too thick either yeah so they, there's a happy medium about a, a quarter of an inch right um, yeah pretty thin yeah pretty thin is that it I think that's they good got them all. maybe one more right there okay and then remember the custard is milk two egg a cup milk cup of sugar, two eggs, teaspoon of vanilla, and two tablespoons of, and I just use Smucker's caramel sauce from the ice, ice cream section in the grocery store. Mix that together well, and we did that first. And, Do you um, want a ladle to put it no, in? No, 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 I'm pouring. You're pour? okay. Just pour it right over. And then you just pour this right over. I wonder if this would even be, as long as it's not real sweet, um, a brunch type thing. It could work for brunch. You could do savory. Yeah. See, now this savory. shallower pan, the, the custard is coming up way more than it did um, on the 9 by 13 when I did the 9 by 13 mm -hmm. So does it puff up a little bit? Um, mine did not. Okay. And so... So it should be fine. Yeah. I mean, it, it might puff up a little bit, but yeah, I don't but not think like it would puff these. Yeah, not like it was mostly eggs. Right. I forgot. I was putting the pecans before the custard, and I forgot. No, it's that's good. Which is what I do a lot anyway. So just put your nuts. Well, but it would have been better if they were covered with the custard. And if so inclined, you could even add raisins. You could add raisins. I don't like raisins, I know, and so but, I never think know. about raisins. But you could. You could use different nuts, almonds. Cranberries. Dried you cranberries. Do, yeah, you could do a cranberry almond. Yeah. Um... You, yeah. You can do the the possibilities are endless. You got it? On this. Shake it. Oh, let's should we get a picture of it? I mean, uh, sure if you want to still picture because it needs to go in the oven. Okay, remember after we put this in the oven, we're going to take a 5-minute break. And so um, then you'll have that to put on the website. I got I'm getting my camera. Okay, I got it. Good. Okay. Okay, so this goes in for 30 to 40 minutes. So we'll put the timer on 30. And at 30 minutes, we'll check that. And I'm really hoping that works. It's always a little nerve wracking because it does look significantly different than when I does did it. it. Well, the egg came, the custard came up okay. enough that. So it may actually require a little bit more baking. It might it might require more baking yeah. because that uh, so the nine by thirteen casserole may actually work better than that little pan. But we'll see we'll, we'll see. see how it does. Um, so that's thirty to forty minutes. Molly needs post its. She ran out. Okay. <laughs> she, a note. She for left Molly. me a note. Um, yeah. So thirty to forty minutes for that, and so we're gonna take a break for about five. And then we'll come back and do announcements and um, tea demo. demo. Yeah. And then we'll look at the finished crinkle cake. Oh yeah, do you want that? 
And okay, so we're okay. So what time is it? Um, quarter. It's quarter to eight. We'll come back in about five minutes, and um, we'll see you then.
We're back. We're back. Okay, sorry. Hello. I was trying to add our shop links as a comment, yeah. and because I never get into it when it's actually live, I couldn't figure out how to make the comment actually go until Molly came back. So Molly came back, <laughs> and so we're back. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, we wanted to make sure that the shop links were on there, and also I wanted to say something about the Etsy shop to you. Um, if you look at the shop you and, and look through the products in the shop, you're going to notice that there are some notices on there that say, let's say for instance, one of the table runners, three people have it in their cart. That doesn't mean they've purchased it, that just means they've put it in their cart. And that doesn't mean it's not available for you. If you want it, you go ahead and purchase it, and, and those people have delayed too long, and yep. they miss out. Yep. On the other hand, if you have put it in the cart, I would recommend that you go ahead and make the purchases, because other people are on here tonight, and that you may, may lose out. So, But there are a lot of items on there where people have put them in their cart, and I just wanted to mention that to you, that... Uh, tonight would be the night to make the purchase because otherwise you may lose out. Yeah, and that's only on the Etsy shop. That's a that's a feature in yeah. Etsy where they will notify you that hey, um, ten people have this in their cart as well as you, and right. there may only be one available. One available. Yeah. Um, so you know that you need to do that. Right. On my website, you, you don't get that notice, um, but I for most of the teas, there's plenty in stock. Um, and so you should not get, uh, unless it's showing as waitlisted, right. I, it's in stock. Right. Um, if it's waitlisted, you can get on the waitlist and be notified when it's back in stock. I'm sorry, Dad's moving the camera and he's cracking me up. Very good job. <laughs> I'm assuming that was very smooth for everybody, so nicely done. We need one of those wheel, we yeah. need wheels. Um, well, we're good, still good kind job. of amateurs here. Very nice. So. No, no, that was really well done. I was, but it was totally distracting me. Uh, what was I talking about? Uh, Waitlist. Wait <laughs> um, so if you, uh, for instance, if you want Lady Mary's and you know it's going to be November, but you want to be reminded when it comes back in the shop, you don't want to have to keep checking. If you go in, like click into Lady Mary's and select one of the sizes, it will then bring up a button where you can add to the wait list. You have to put your email in because that's how you're going to get notified. Right. But put your email in there, and um, and once that once the stock is added in the online shop on the back end, when I add that, you automatically receive an email to let you know that that item is back in stock. Um, and so uh, any and that's true anytime, not just Lady Mary's. Anytime you see any of the teas have that wait list banner on them, you can click in there and um, and join the wait list. You do have to select a size for the wait list button to light up um, or to show up, but um, and and just because you put that you're interested in a three ounce tin doesn't mean that that automatically puts a three ounce tin in your cart. It right. just lets you know that that tea is back available right um, the whole the whole tea um, and then you can order whatever size you want. So yeah, you're not committed you're not to buying that. You're not committed to a three ounce yeah. tin. Just That's just in. to get you on the list. Yeah. Okay. Um, it does help me know, you know, How much. size wise, but yeah. it, but honestly, I'm not counting on that anyway. Because yeah. um, that's not a sale. Um, okay. okay. All right. So, so we're cooking away. We're cooking. Our crinkle cake is cooking. And um, our kettle is boiling and so while the kettle is coming up to the boil I'm going to go through our normal announcements that we usually do at the beginning of our evening. Um, I'm going to remind you of the giveaway. The giveaway is the two ounce bag of Queen's Blend and the little tea book, little book of tea together is the giveaway and the key word is QE2, just the three alpha numeric QE2. Mm -hmm. Um, in the comments, and Molly and I will do that drawing tomorrow afternoon, sometime after church. I'll go through all of the names, yep. and we'll draw them out of the fabulous Tea for All Reasons 15 ounce mug. Um, and like I said earlier, th this is the 15. Um, we do have an 11 ounce mug as well with the logo, and that's what that is. Um, okay, 
So I talked about the supply chain issues. Bad news. Mm -hmm. Bad news. But I have good news. Good news. Okay, so October's coming, and if you're a quarterly subscriber, and there are a few um, that are subs have subscriptions... My mouth doesn't want to work. Um, so that is coming up in October. Your PayPal invoice will go out to your email on October the 5th. I think it goes out pretty early in the morning, even before I wake up. Um, you'll get that invoice. Once you've made your payment, I will process your box, and you will receive your beautiful quarterly subscription teas for October. Awesome. I have some great teas yeah. picked out for you guys. Um, and um, if you are interested in, in signing up for the quarterly subscription, send me an email and I can send you all the details. So I used to offer it through the website and um, the cost for that way to do it was exorbitant and I decided I couldn't do that anymore. Um, but I am totally open to having subscribers. Um, but I have to do it manually through PayPal, and so uh, shoot me an email at info at tforallreasons.com, and I'll send you all the details on great subscription. That's great. Uh, typically, you get five one-and-a-half-ounce bags of tea um, that are seasonal blends each quarter, so the October blends will be fall-flavored themed teas um, and it runs from black green rooibos I have one customer who requested caffeine free and so I do accommodate caffeine free oh, that's right for that Very good. so what you usually end up getting is the caffeine free is um, a lot of rooibos uh, but I do have a few black decaf teas um, that I carry but um, they're not fall Right flavors. Yeah, but you've got so many fall, so many fall rooibos, and so and herbal, um, and and herbals. Yes, yeah. true. Um, and so okay. I I can accommodate a caffeine free version if you need that for your subscription box. Um, the fall sampler is now available in the shop. I didn't have time to package a fall sampler, which is why the giveaway is mm -hmm. the two ounce bag of Queens Blend. But um, typically in the sampler, you get six half-ounce bags of tea of the fall favorites. You can always do it in October. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, I'm, we are ju we're not We're really not even technically in fall. In fall. Yeah, well, it's meteorological fall <laughs> because that happens on September 1st, right? Yeah. Pop me sure. Right. Uh, astronomical fall, autumn, begins on Thursday, I think, 21st. the 21st, whatever mm -hmm. Thursday is, uh, or Wednesday. Wednesday, is it Wednesday? Wednesday. Anyway, yeah, the 21st. Monday's the 19th. Yeah, so, um, anyway, um, yeah, but so I am going to preview some of the fall blends tonight, yeah. and I'll preview, I'll preview, but I'll show more in October, and the giveaway will probably be a fall sampler, but I can't guarantee that. Um, but the sampler is available in the shop, and um, so you can get that. The summer sampler and the In the Peaches samplers are leaving the shop first thing Monday morning. Ooh. So I do a lot of business stuff early, early, early in the morning before I start my day job, and one of those is cleaning up the website. And so that is happening Monday morning. Um, so get your orders in tonight or... Yep. Tomorrow. So if you want summer samplers or an in the peaches sampler, um, you've got uh, like 36 hours yeah. to do that. Um, let me see. Advent. Advent. I know you're all waiting. Yeah. Um, so I already addressed the issues with tea supplies. Um, I have selected all of the teas for the Advent box. 24 teas go in the advent box. I did a poll in the group asking uh, if they, if y'all preferred having a different tea every day or if you were uh, interested in having teas repeat and the consensus was no repeats. Mm. Fortunately, I have enough teas that I yeah. can accommodate that request. Good. And Good. So, um, so no repeats in the advent box. You get a different tea all 24 days of that season in December. Um, the pre-orders will be available at the beginning of October, so not too much longer. No, that's just two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah. Um, so 
Uh, I'll post in the group when it's available, um, and you can post on the page. I'll let you know yeah. that that listing has gone live um, for pre-orders. Um, the goal, much like last year, is to have boxes start shipping out that second week of November, around the 10th. Um, is when I'm aiming to have the first batch go out and I ship as the orders come in. So it's first come, first come in, first out yeah. um, is how those boxes go out. So um, if you order late, your box goes out mm -hmm. later. Okay. Um, and the listing does have a drop dead date for ordering to ensure that you receive it before the 1st of December. What's our time? Um, 11 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're good. I think maybe. Well, we think we're gonna have to add time. Yeah, I think so. Because that yeah, that's was a okay. Because you're still yeah, good. it's totally fine. Because I'm not even at the tea demo yet. Um, you can order more than one box, uh, Advent box, and you can um, have it shipped to another person. Yeah, what great gifts these would be. Yeah. I mean, you can order more than one. Yeah. You can order as many as you want. Yeah. Now, I would say if you're ordering. If you want to order three boxes and they're going to three different addresses, I do ask that those be separate orders because it's three different addresses right. and that ship to needs to be in the yeah. um, in the address and the shipping fee needs to accommodate Apply, that yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. So, but if you just want three boxes and you're going to send them to whoever or give them to whoever, then order your three boxes and we're good to go. That's great. Um, but I can ship to another person if you want that to happen. Um, and then the Han so last year I also did Hanukkah boxes and which had nine teas in it and uh, like one for the eight days and then a bonus. Um, and then a 12 days of Christmas um, box. Now the 12 days of Christmas start Christmas Day and goes 12 days to Epiphany. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which is January 6th or whatever. Right. And so if you don't necessarily want 12, I mean, uh, 24, 24. Um, separate teas, but think you could do 12, then the 12 days of Christmas is a I, good option. I love for that you. idea. Um, I, and that for a gift, you know, a Christmas, Christmas gift, gift that they open. And yeah, yeah, I just love that idea. Um, and that has 12, one for each day right. of the 12 yeah. days of Christmas. And those will be Christmas holiday teas exclusively. The Advent box has some fall teas in there too because you're um, still, still in, in technically in fall yeah. even though mm -hmm. it's December but um, anyway oh. those those boxes are I know I'm getting yeah, there. Okay. I'm, I'm, I got it. I got it. I'm, excited I'm talking about, about the one. tea boxes first. <laughs> um, I'm excited about it too but <sighs> okay. I got an order. Um, anyway so those uh, the Hanukkah is late this year I believe um, and then of course the 12 days of Christmas. Yeah, it starts. The Hanukkah the starts the 18th of December, okay. and so um, the shipping time frame is about the same um, in terms of when you order and then when it goes out. It, it says in the listing um, what again what the last day is that you can order and still have that box arrive before the first day of either of those things. What size in Advent for each? I'm not sure what that question means. What size in Advent for each day? I'm not sure what that means. Like, how much tea? I would say, yeah, how much tea? Um, they're small packets, but I try to fill them pretty well. I would say... A couple of cups? Maybe two. Yeah. Two or, cups. Or like or a small like, teapot, maybe. Yeah. Like a, a couple of I, I would think you could get maybe two. Or can you get a mug? I think you can for sure get a mug, a mug. and you might, depending on the tea, you might get more than one mug. Yeah. So if it's a rooibos, which is a very tiny needle leaf, you might get two mugs out of one advent packet. If it's a black tea and it's got a bunch of other stuff in it, which a lot of them do, um, then you might only get yeah. like one and a half mugs. Mm -hmm. um, but you're getting at least one good mug. Mm -hmm out of the packet. Which would mean that you probably would get a couple of um, A couple tea of teacups, yes. Mm -hmm. So a regular five, five, ounce. five, six ounce teacup, you'll get two teacups. Yeah. So like a two, two cup pot, mm -hmm. um, okay. maybe. All right. Um, but they are small packets. Um, and They have to fit inside. They have to fit inside the fabulous wall hanging. So you remember, yeah, that's what she meant, perfect. 
Um, last year, I had a friend who um, is a seamstress who made uh, quilted wall hangings for your tea packets. I still have some of those and they will be available um, in the shop. Um, and some of you may have picked up one during our Christmas in July because I had them listed in July. Mm -hmm. So those, the ones that I have left from last year, they're coming back to the shop also. But I have another seamstress friend who made... They just cut off again. Back. Yeah, that's probably it. Could be just you. We're and just we're, we're just gonna, gonna keep, keep going, going as yeah. if everything is good. If yeah. the phone looks like everything is good, then we're good. Okay. Um, so I have another friend who sews, and so she's doing two different varieties for me, and I have one to show. And so this is the one. This is fabulous. Um, I just love Christmas this. Christmas in London, and it's got the pockets that go around the perimeter, and they're actually randomized. Right. They're not in any particular right. order. But these packets, I should have brought a packet to it's show. Not, is the it pocket. the sample size that you gave, that you brought me? Well, not the gold. Okay. They're they're taller. Okay. But the packets will fit in these pockets. Yeah. Um, each tea packet will fit in the pocket. It's got a great coordinating fabric on the back, as you can see. So this is one um, version, and um, I think I'm only going to have four of these. Ooh only four and then there's another pattern that she's working on and again I'll only have four so I'm only gonna have a total of eight this year in these new and um, when are they styles. gonna be available I well I'm hoping before the open house okay I need Oof. to I need to confirm with her okay well before we've got the, a, bit, a bit of time to wait yeah so um, so those hopefully soon will be available okay um, and I'll keep you posted in the group and I'll have mom notify you on the page when they come listed in the shop. When I list the advent um, in the shop at the beginning of October, the ones that I already have from last year, that will get listed as well because I have those. Once I have these new ones, I will list those. Okay. Because I have to photograph them and sure. Yeah. I, I need to get the other one. <coughs> Excuse me, and photograph them and, and get the listing created. Molly has a note. Can you pre order? Um, I am going to say no on the quilted wall hanging, no pre orders for right now. Because, I, because these are being handmade by a friend of mine, I want to make sure, um, I don't want to put too much pressure on her, and if she's not able to make all of them, then I don't want them sold right. and put yeah. pressure on her. So um, I'm hoping to have four and four. That's the plan. Um, okay. And you'll just have to stay tuned. Yep. Um, and so if you're not in the group, lots of insider info, I post this stuff in the group. Um, join the group on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash groups. I think it has an S on the end. Slash T for all reasons. And you'll find the logo um, with our packaging um, is the picture and um, yep. well it's not that logo it's this logo I have dos logos <laughs> which can be confusing but it's the more modern looking logo that's on the page with a picture of packages and thanks dad um, and you find the group. So join the group. It is a private group. You do have to answer a couple of questions. Your Facebook page needs to have, um, like your profile needs to have a picture. I have some security settings set up to prevent bots and spammers, which we have been overrun with yeah. lately. Yeah. Not just the page, and I know if you're on the page you've seen that, but yeah. in the group as well, I've gotten a lot of member requests from accounts that are clearly bots. Um, they don't have profile pictures. They're relatively new. They have no friends. Um, well, and I, I discovered that it was generated by the Queen's picture, the post on the passing of the uh, Queen. Yes, and so I deleted that. Um, I didn't want any more of those coming in. So yeah. I have deleted that from the page, and that should take care of it, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. So we had 44,000 comments. Oh, my goodness. Yes. That's crazy. Yes. I mean, I saw the private messages that came in. Yeah, and I it was crazy, those, so I just yeah, deleted it. Things, things got a little nuts over yeah. the last week. Um, but I, I received a bunch of weird membership requests yeah. to the group that I declined because they didn't answer the questions or they didn't have a profile picture. or It was 
obvious to me that they were not legit. Right. So, so make sure to answer the questions. Make sure you've got. It doesn't even have to be a picture of you, but it needs to. You need to have a picture Something. and yeah. um, and join the group, um, and you'll get the insider info. Uh, did I go over everything? I, I think, think so. I covered everything. Yep. Okay, so now I'm our tea. Yeah, I'm watching. Two two minutes. Yeah. Well, let me go take a look real okay. quick. Yeah. Because you know there. better when it's done. You know better when it's done. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Oh, no, no, I wasn't showing. Okay. No, Mom didn't want to show the dirty oven, but we all use our ovens. It gets dirty looking. That actually looks fabulous. But I do think we're going to want to add a few minutes. So, um, well, let me look at it again. You, you go ahead, Beth. You can go back over there. I'm going to check, check the jiggle. Yeah, I think the middle needs a little bit of time, don't you think? Yeah. All right. So it's maybe three minutes. Five, something five. Five, okay. All right. Okay. 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 So I put five minutes on that. I'm going to bring the kettle over. Um, move this out of the way. Move this out of the way. Okay. I was going to show the stuff I normally show, like our two ounce bag and our four ounce bag and then this is the eight ounce bag um, that you get and tins, three ounce tin. Um, so I'm going to move these out of the way so they don't get wet. Okay, so I'm very excited to show you, I'm going to move these off. Yep. So I'm very excited to show you, I brought six teas to show. Um, the two royal blends and then four of the fall blends and then next month I'll show more fall teas because we have a bunch of fabulous fall teas mm -hmm. um, but I did want to show you the what I call the royal blends the Queen's blend that is the giveaway tea this is what it looks like oh my goodness I can smell it um, black tea raspberry and lemon um, and it's got silver sh coarse sugar in there, although it's hard to see that in it really. Um, so the Queen's Blend is the first one. And then the King's Blend that I did in honor of King Charles is a black tea that is um, has almonds, uh, raspberry, and blueberry in it. And um, it also has the sugar mm -hmm. in it, but it's hard to see. It's hard to see it, but it is in there. And so that's in honor of King Charles. The, both of these blends are only available. Hers is only available and um, through when he's going to be coronated. Uh, like once they announce the date of his coronation, her tea will be taken out of the shop a couple of days before he's coronated. His will remain through the whole coronation festivities, mm -hmm. so probably another week or so longer okay. um, than hers. But they're both limited edition, and it could be, you know, like nine months. It just depends right. on mm -hmm. when they announce that he's going to be officially coronated. Um, it could be a year, so we'll, we'll see. But the, the, they're going to be around for a while, but, but they will go away after yeah. a while. Mm -hmm. Um, they will go away. So um, those are those two, and they're not particularly fall, but I they were I wanted right. to do something. I loved Queen Elizabeth. I thought yeah. she was amazing, and I wanted to honor her yeah. memory. And I think it's uh, his of historic importance. We have mm -hmm. they have a new king, mm -hmm. and to um, commemorate that. So there okay. we go. There we go. Okay, and then if you were a beta taster, you already know this one, but this is new. Uh, oh, can you smell it? Yes. It smells so it's good. It's so good. Uh, salty caramel pumpkin. And um, this is an oolong, so it's not a black tea. It's kind of between black and green. Um, and it is caramel and pumpkin, but it's not super spicy pumpkin. It's not no. like pumpkin spice. No, it's, 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 it's like relatively fresh. mild, Yeah, but just so good. It's very good. Yeah. Uh, so that's new. Uh, and then um, you're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna demonstrate which ones. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do. I thought all I was gonna up. do all. Okay. Of them. All right. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Mimi's.
pumpkin pie, which is a rooibos. And if you're a fan of Auntie's pumpkin pie, mm -hmm. it's just like that, um, but in the rooibos version. Um, so good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. spicy and pumpkin-y and uh, delicious. Uh, and it's a great dessert tea because it's a rooibos and so it's naturally decaffeinated and wonderful. And then the old favorite Autumn Harvest black tea, which I love to blend. I love when I blend this because it makes my house smell so good when I'm blending this one. It's um, cranberries and cinnamon and cloves and... Um, oh, I think it's so the very good. first... Um, uh, fall, fall tea that I blended. Mm -hmm. It's I really I have yeah. to blend some this week and yeah. I'm excited because yeah. it smells so good. Yeah. And then last but not least, pecan pumpkin tart, which I think has become a favorite of it's, many. Of yeah, you. And, and me for um, sure. Yeah, I love it. I just um, more. Green tea and it it tastes exactly like it sounds. It's pecans, pumpkin, um, little little bit of pastry ish flavor to it. Mm really good and it's a nice green tea so I'm going to demonstrate all of these really really quickly so um, in and I'm going to demonstrate using a couple of our tools so this is the pincer infuser how are we for time oh yeah we're good and so I'm going to do this one for one of the black teas actually I'll yeah for um, I'll do the Queen's blend in this so you want to only want to fill up half of the scoop and we're doing a five ounce cup and so one perfect cup of teaspoon is perfect and so I'm going to put that in the cup now normally in a teacup like that you're not going to use that tool you're going to use that tool in a mug but for our purposes tonight it will work so I'm just going to pour that water over and let that steep so typically three minutes for a black tea but as my dad was pointing out it depends on your taste and it depends on the tea. So, um, but typically for a black tea, you're gonna do a three minute steep. What is the name of the green tea? Uh, the green tea is pecan pumpkin tart and it is available in the shop. Yes. Anyway, so that's green, I mean, uh, black tea, Queen's Blend. So the secret is if it gets bitter, <laughs> cut down the bright. Right. So if you find that your tea is bitter, you need to reduce your, your steeping time. Um, so the general rule is black tea is going to be three minutes. Green tea is going to be no more than two minutes. White tea is really only about one minute. Um, and then rooibos and herbals, and rooibos is an herbal, but rooibos and other herbals can go anywhere from five to ten yeah. minutes. You can't overbrew. You a cannot overbrew a rooibos. Okay, so these are tea sacks, and I've demonstrated these before. This is the tea sack number one, which is a great size for this tiny little teacup. Oh, I forgot the squeezer. Oh, I the squeezer. So I'm going to put the King's Blend in this one, and I'm doing one scoop into the tea sack, and I always flip the spoon. Thank you very much. And fold over, and I'm not going to bother with a tea clip because this cup's small enough that we don't need it. And pour that over. And let that steep. So that also will take three minutes. Did you put a timer on that? Okay, you're awesome. I'll put a timer on that one. <clears throat> and time. Three minutes. Is there any sugar in the pecan pumpkin tart? I don't think so. Um, no, I like I have not added any sugar to it. It does have pecan pieces in it, and it does have fruits in it. So if you're sensitive to um, nuts, be aware that it does have pecans. It's not just pecan flavor. It actually has pecans in it. Um, and it does have apple pieces, orange peels, um, carrots, beets in it, but no additional sugar. Uh, you can use the hourglass tea timer. Someone said they use the hourglass tea timer. I actually sell an hourglass tea timer. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to watch it. It's very easy to take your eyes off that thing, and then the next thing you know, it's been done, and you don't know how long it's been done. So 
Um, like if you're going to stand there and watch it, absolutely use it. It's totally fine. Um, just be aware that you have to keep your eye on it. Um, okay, so that's for that. <clears throat> okay, so the next one I'm going to do also in a tea sack. That one's ready? Okay, hold on. I'm going to get this one steeping. Um, this is the oolong. Oolong is more, it, so oolong is between a green and a black. I steep this for three minutes, but if you find that three minutes is too much on the salty caramel pumpkin, then back off your time, and because um, it may only need two. It's to your taste. I think I'm good. It's good. Woo! I want you to look at it. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah. Um, I, was looking, I, know. I know. I was looking at this right here. Yeah. Maybe another, little, yeah, a little bit Because I did add some time yeah. after the last one. Okay, time. yeah. We're, we were inspecting. Okay, so the Pop told me that this one had three minutes, so I'm going to take this out. And some leaves did... So the Queens and the Kings blend both have rooibos in the blend, and so that is what fell out of this little steeper into the cup. But you can see that's a nice cup of black tea. Um, the Queen's Blend. And then the King's Blend has about 30 seconds more to go. And that also is a nice cup of black tea. <clears throat> yeah, that has 30 seconds to go. And then this one has, it must have hibiscus in it. Oh, because mm -hmm. it turns the salty caramel oolong. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, it's got beets. Oh, there you go. And hibiscus. Mm -hmm. Yep. So don't be alarmed because the salty caramel oolong is it's going like, to be pink yeah, um, because it does have beet pieces in it, which mm -hmm. sounds like a weird, it sounds weird, but it actually works. It does. And, um, yeah, that's this one. And hibiscus in it. And hibiscus is going to put a pink hue on everything. So this is the King's blend, also a nice cup of black tea. That actually looks blacker than... Thank you very much. That looks blacker than the Queen's Blend, but there are your two black teas, and then I'm going to give this another 30 seconds or so for the oolong. Did you put time on that one? One minute? Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so one more minute on that, and you've got a question. A question? Please give me the teas to taste when you're done. Oh. <laughs> Molly wants to taste the teas. I thought it was a question. She's putting her bid in. She's putting her bid in. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so in the two pots, um, I'm going to do the Autumn Harvest and the Mimi's Pumpkin Pie. And so I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to do the perfect pot of teaspoon for each one of the pots, especially the rooibos, because you can drink that. Yeah. Um, so we'll do so, three, three cups, maybe? Yeah, I'll put it in here. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so that's going right into the pot, and we'll let that steep. And that is, uh, I'm going to give that one five minutes to steep. And then we'll do, you want to do the pecan pumpkin tart in sure. that one? Mm -hmm. So then we'll do the pecan pumpkin tart. Have you done tart. the autumn harvest already? No, I'm going to do that in a tea sack. Oh, gotcha. Okay, okay I'll get that in a sec. All right, and then the pecan pumpkin tart into this pot. Yes, I'll get that. Okay, so this is the salty caramel oolong, which is a beautiful pink color because of that. My bowl went away. Right here. Okay. And I need the hibiscus. Oh, okay. Um, so that's the salty caramel oolong. And then we have the rooibos and the green are steeping. Yeah, hold on. Uh, someone asked, will the tickled pink for the cure be available in October? And that is a yes. I meant to write that down. Um, October 1st, tickled pink for the cure um, will be available in the shop for the entire month of October. And um, that is um, in honor of breast cancer survivors. And um, it's a rooibos tea, and it's got pink ribbons in it. And... Um, I'll show that at the next um, Facebook Live, um, but it will be available in the shop on October 1st. And I, I thank you for asking that because I did mean to mention that before. 
Um, All right, this is, is a total of 41 minutes. Okay, 41 minutes on our crinkle cake, and we think it's done. You think it's done? It's looking pretty good. It does. Um, so she's going to bring that over, and we'll, that's not going to and we'll take a look. And I'll prep, so I'm going to prep the autumn harvest for steeping. And, oh, there's another step on the crinkle cake. <gasps> there it is. There's another step. I'll put it back over here. Okay, yeah, if you want to put it right over there. I almost forgot. Very important step. So I put autumn harvest in a tea sack and we're waiting for the water to boil and then we'll pour that water. The pecan pumpkin tart green looks like it's ready. So I'm going to go ahead and pour that. Actually, that needs to go in there. Okay, water this one goes over here to keep them even with that. So this is the pecan pumpkin tart green tea. Yeah, I'm glad I looked at that. Is that ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can see that's a nice green color. That's what green tea should look like. If it's darker than that, you may have oversteeped it. And it'll be super bitter if you oversteeped it, so don't do that. You really only need about two minutes for that. Um, okay, so this is for the autumn harvest. There we go. And then we're done with that. Yeah. And then your and then the Mimi's should be ready. Yeah, we should be able to do that. So the Mimi's rooibos. This is the Mimi's pumpkin pie. Yep. Look at that. Beautiful. Cup of tea. Mimi's, so our autumn harvest. We'll give that another two minutes. So we're waiting on that one. So while we're waiting on that one, I'm going to explain. There's one more step on the crinkle cake. And it's um, in some of the other recipes, like if you Google the Philo crinkle cake, you'll find a ton of videos where they've made a simple syrup that gets drizzled over the cake at the end. I don't, I'm lazy, I'm a lazy cook, and so I don't like making simple syrup, even though it's simple. Um, so I've, I've found a different way to do that. So See, to me, that just doesn't seem like it makes any sense. I mean, I could see where you would do like a, um, um, a um, what do I want to say, confectioner sugar, like a glaze? Um, a glaze. I can no, see when you taste that. this, no, it doesn't, no. But but the glaze but doesn't the, make sense for okay, this. Okay, but the best is what you're offering. Yeah, so, I, so my suggestion for this particular version of the crinkle cake, which um, I'll show you in just a minute because we're waiting on the timer on the autumn harvest, <clears throat> which is a great black tea. Oh, my goodness, Pop. Okay. Um, so... The simple syrup is the one that you traditionally see in the videos, but what I do is I use that caramel sauce mm -hmm. or golden syrup, which is not American, it's British, um, but if you have a store that carries British goods, you might be able to find it, and I think you can find it on Amazon as well. So golden syrup is similar in consistency to Cairo, but it, but it doesn't taste like Cairo. Mm -hmm. It's hard to explain, um, but it's delicious. So this is an option to use or the caramel. So we're gonna demonstrate both of these, but what I recommend is you put a little bit in um, a Pyrex measuring cup and um, heat it in the microwave and it will loosen it a little mm -hmm. bit so that it will be more the consistency of the simple syrup that you make on the stove right. and drizzle that on your crinkle cake. I mean, you can leave it without any drizzle at all. When right. I made it for the family, I didn't do a drizzle at the end, and it was totally fine. Mm -hmm. But it should, like, most of the recipes call for the drizzle, and so I'm going to show you the drizzle. And if you're drizzling on a hot cake, it's going, it's going to, to soak in, soak in, and, soak in. and be, um, yep. uh, you know, uh, probably wouldn't need to be heated. Right. Right? Well, I recommend loose, like, loose it thins it out a little bit, okay. it, so right. it's not as... Do you want to do that with this? I'm going to do it with both of them. Okay. So this is the autumn harvest. 
Autumn Harvest. So we've got Queen's Blend, King's Blend, Salty Caramel Pumpkin, um, Mimi's Pumpkin Pie, Autumn Harvest, and Con Pecan Pumpkin Tart. Pumpkin tart. So yeah. there are your six teas for tonight. Wonderful. Okay, so going back to the crinkle cake, and I know it seems a little disjointed because we're all over the place between things, but I'm going to demonstrate heating up these sauces to thin them out a little bit. Not thin them, but loosen them up a hair. And then we're going to demonstrate that on half. So we're going to do caramel sauce on one side and the golden syrup on the other. So I'm going to take not even a quarter cup. That's probably like two tablespoons maybe. Mm -hmm. Two tablespoons. That's the golden syrup and we're going to heat that, I don't know, like 30 seconds. Probably not even that long. And then we're going to do the same thing with caramel sauce. Same thing, we're just going to heat that up a little bit. It also makes it a little easier to drizzle over your crinkle cake. So I'll take that one when it's done. And we're going we're gonna to do one half with the golden syrup and one half with the caramel sauce. All right. I did 18 seconds. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. See, so you can see how liquid that is compared to when I was pouring it in. And so I'm just going to drizzle this. Over half of this and you want to give it a good. So it's a lot like I think baklava they do like a honey sauce or maybe the simple syrup. It's the same idea over and it just gives it that shine on top and a little extra sweetness. And then the caramel sauce on the other half. Mm, I can smell that. Mm. Fabulous. Yeah, that really does give it a glaze it gives like it the baklava. A, yeah, a nice shine. Mm -hmm. I need a spatula mm -hmm. to get the rest of that out. You want uh, a plate and a knife? Yes, please. And so we're going to cut this up so that you can see what those layers look like um, on your beautiful crinkle cake. And like I said, you can definitely serve this for tea or breakfast anytime. And um, I need a little. What? Oh, is that chipped? That's all right. I had that. I want to give you a nice sharp one. I don't know how sharp that one is. I'm sure it's fine. Now, normally you would let this cool for a little bit. This Probably is. I want to take it off the rack. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's uh -huh. yeah, hot. It's hot. Hot. So, did you hear that crunch? But I think you do want to let it sit for a little bit before you slice it up. Um, Yeah, I can't get that. Yeah. I got it. Nope. There you go. There we go. I got that. There we go. Oh, and there you can see it's gooey. Mm -mm. You can you can kind of see the layers if you mm -hmm. look in there. You can see the layers. A little ice cream on top. A little little ice cream or even just some. Warmed up cream. A little whipped cream. With that apple. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Do you want a piece, Pop? Mm. Is, is that it? Oh, yes. <laughs> He's nodding his head. Oh, I should have cut a caramel one. Mm. Fabulous, Jen. There you go. Just fabulous. There you yeah. go, you need a fork. Very good. Molly, you want some? Yes. <laughs> Molly left.
All right, folks. Okay. I think we're um, ready to wrap it up for tonight, yep. right? Yep. So I think that's it for tonight. I, th um, I will post the recipe um, probably not tomorrow, sometime this week, and we'll make sure to um, notify you both in the group and here on the page that the recipe is available. Oh, I should have gotten a picture before I cut it of the finished product. Oh, well. <laughs> well, you might well, be able to cheat do, a little bit. Yeah, and do, close up. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so hopefully you'll try this recipe. It really is not hard. It just takes some time because yeah. it is multiple steps, but it's super easy. Yeah. I don't think you can mess it up. No, I don't think so either. It's, I think it's pretty forgiving. Did you want one with caramel sauce? I'll take this. Okay. Um, and um, absolutely delicious. It smells good. Oh, wait. Yeah. You can see the layers better here. Oh, okay. Nice. All right. Can you see it? Molly kind of, there you go. Cut into it a bit cut into, and you can see the layers. You see the layers. Yeah. And let um, me just say one more time in case some of you uh, missed the beginning. Uh, we kind of started, we launched right in. But um, there were a lot of table toppers that were shown. And yep. you can see them all in the Etsy shop. And see the dimensions. And lots of beautiful fall uh, table toppers and runners. So yep. be sure and check that out. Yep. And the fall blends in the shop. Yep. In your all shop. of the fall blends are available in the shop. Um, the holiday blends will come later. Um, wanted to get the fall teas right. out for you. Um, is yeah, <laughs> Pop is scarfing down. I think he likes the crinkle cake. I'm <laughs> thinking that's a thumbs up from him. A thumbs up. Yes, yes. Um, so that's good. Excellent. Because it's thank you, Jen. Super easy. Thank you, Jen. Um, so, so next, next month. month Next month, we have a great baking demo that I'll be doing. Yes, she's again. doing it again. Um, October 15th is our next one, and it's basically more fall teas and the baking demo. Right. And I, I might have a second. It's not really a baking. But I might have a second one, but I need to test it again. I tested it once, and it didn't come out right. So, yeah. Um, We're still working on that one. Still working but on we've that. We've got some good. Uh, this will be kind of focused on savory. Yeah, but it can be it sweet can as well. It can be sweet. I think most people think of it as being sweet. I think they do. But we're taking it a savory route. Yeah. Um, and so... <laughs> and I, that's all we're going to say. And that's all I'm saying about that. <laughs> yep. So we're looking forward to that. Um, but again, it, it'll be a lot of me because I'll be baking and doing tea demo. But with And I appreciate it. Fabulous mother. <laughs> um, so that's October 15th, 7 p.m. sharp here at the page. Yes. And don't forget the giveaway, QE2, for the Queen's Blend 2-ounce bag and the little book of tea, or the little tea, whatever that book is. Um, the charming little the charming little tea book. Charming little tea book, yes. Uh, QE2, do the drawing tomorrow, and um, I guess that's it. That's it. Thanks for yeah. joining us thank once again. Thank you so again. much for hanging with us. Yeah, and, thank you. And being appreciate patient with our technical issues at the beginning. And appreciate all of you. We do appreciate all of you, and we hope you have a good rest of your weekend. Yeah. All right. Good night. Good night.